So we've been solving equations pretty much a traditional way where you get all the variables to one side, all the constants to the other side, and you divide by the coefficient, and what have you. What I want to do in this example is show you an alternate way of actually solving algebra problems and also introduce you to the capabilities of the graphing calculator. So we're going to start off pretty much with the same premise. We want to get everything to one side, and notice I said everything to one side. We call that zeroing out the equation. We want one side of the equation to equal zero. And so I'm pointing to the left hand side because it's much easier to move these two terms. And so I'll go zero is equal to three times two a plus six minus one and one third a plus four and one half. And as I bring this five a over, I'll bring it over as a minus 5a. And as I bring the negative 4 over, I bring it over as a plus 4. Everybody will have different levels of, of comfort when it comes to solving these. For me, I naturally want to distribute. I want to combine some like terms. And so I'm probably going to go a little bit further than what you would actually have to do. And so I'm just going to distribute this here. 3 times 2a is 6a. 3 times 6 is 18, minus 1 and 1 third a, plus 4 and 1 half, minus 5a, plus 4. I do that because now I see where I have like, some like terms I can simplify. And yes, I have an a term here, but I'm more interested just in the simple things to simplify, if that makes sense. So I go 6a take away 5a is a single a. 0 equals a, and I'll go ahead and group this over, minus 1 and 1 third a. And then I've got these constant values of 18 and 4. 18 and 4, of course, is 22. So I can go plus 22, and then I have that mixed number there, plus 4 and 1 half. <laughs> Once you have simplified the expression to a level that you're comfortable with, you can go to your graphing calculator, and I'm going to try and do two things here at once. I'm going to show you the equation that I have, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on my calculator. So I'm going to push the equation up just for a moment. On my graphing calculator, of course, I want to turn the thing on, and I'm going to hit second, or pardon me, I'm just going to hit the y equals. I'm just going to hit this y equal right here. The y equal is your equation editor. And you notice that it allows me to put all these different equations in here. I'm interested in this being where it says y, that's my 0. So I'm going to say a minus 1 third a plus 22 plus 4 and a half. But when you enter this in as a y and x equation, your only option is to use an x. You can't use the other letters. And so when I type this in here, I've got a, so I'm going to type in x, because that's my variable. a is my variable, but we're going to use the generic x for everything. And then I need to do minus, and how I do the mixed numbers on the graphing calculator, and this is for all levels of graphing calculators, is I use parentheses. So notice I have the minus here, and then I'll go one, that's my whole number, plus one divided by three. That's the fractional part, so it's whole and part. One and one third, and then I'll put the x right next to it. The graphing calculator will see the negative here and understand that it's negative one and a third, x. Notice that there'll always be a plus here when you do a mixed number. And then I'll go plus 22 plus, now I have another mixed number, so I'll do a parenthesis and say 4 plus 1 divided by 2. And you see that this, what I have in here, now matches what was up here. All I did was replace the variable a with x and then in my graphing calculator, I set up the mixed number using the parentheses. Once you have that, you want to graph it. And so I'm going to hit graph. Now as I graphed it, I didn't see anything happen on my screen. And so I may need to zoom out. Right here's your zoom button in the middle of the top of these buttons here. I go down to option three, which says zoom out. So I hit enter. I'll hit enter. Now I see this line. 
Well, what's important is I need to know where this line crosses the x-axis. That's my goal. That's when the y value would be zero. Remember that this is the y-axis, so this measures y values. These are x values, and so this will measure x values. I'm trying to figure out over here where it crosses the x-axis. The y value would be zero, and the x value will be whatever it is over here. Now I notice that I'm still not on the screen where that line is crossing the x-axis. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom out a little bit more. And now I see a point where it's crossing. That point of intersection is really going to be the solution to this algebra equation. And so once I can see that it crosses the x-axis like that, and all the problems that I gave you on the take-home test are going to do the same thing. It only crosses at one point. So once you identify that, then it's a pretty simple procedure. You'll hit second and this trace button, or second calc. So I go second, trace button. And now I have some options here. It says, do you want a value? Do you want a zero, a min, a max, a point of intersection? Or these are some calculus things. It's a little bit beyond us at this point. What I will be selecting is number two, the zero. I want to find where the zero is. Again, that's why they call it a zeroing out process. The equation is equal to zero, and I'm trying to find where it crosses the x-axis. That's when the y is zero, so we call that a zero. And when I called that up, it said, I need a left bound. The calculator is asking for the left side of where this is crossing the x-axis. So I just scroll over. Make sure that I'm to the left of where it crosses the x-axis. I hit enter. Now the calculator will ask for a right bound. I have to go to the right of where the point of intersection is, of where it crosses the x-axis. Now clearly I'm to the right of where that point of intersection is, that zero is. I hit enter. And then it'll always ask for a guess. You could just hit enter again. It doesn't really matter. And then you'll see down here, it actually reports a value. I know it's a little hard to see with the, the camera here, but that says 79.5, and then the Y says 1 times 10 to the negative 12th. That's really, really close to zero, so we assume that to be zero. And that means that we can actually go ahead and answer this by saying A will equal 79 and a half. Again, this is the process of using the calculator to find zeros. When you find zeros, that's the same as if you algebraically would have solved this. And obviously, this technique is going to get more complicated as we go along. I just wanted to do it with some of these simple linear functions where we know it's only going to cross the x-axis at one point and get you to be able to show me that you can use the technology to find those zeros or to solve algebra equations. We'll go through a second example here in a minute. Just to recap, when you call this up, it's second calc. You're looking for zero. You need a value that falls to the left of where it crosses the x-axis. So I hit enter. A value to the right. I guess. And then it automatically reports that value. And you see this time when I did it, it actually told me y equals zero. So I'm very confident that my answer was 79.5.